all the teams in the NFL have made their roster cuts and cut their rosters down to 53. And as that's happened, there's some guys out there that could be good additions to this football team. So I went through and I looked at everybody that was released and waved and thought, okay, maybe we can use this guy. Maybe we can use this guy. Okay, so let's start with running back here. Okay, Melvin Gordon was let go of the Ravens. I don't know if he's somebody that would have long usage with the Colts. You know, this might be somebody that we just pick up for those first four games while Jonathan Taylor's not here. You know, assuming he stays with the Colts and he ends up playing this year. But I think stylistically, Melvin Gordon is the kind of back that we might need for that frame, right? Because you're going to have Evan Holt and Deion Jackson to start the season. Zach Moss is going to come back at some point, but Melvin Gordon would be a really good you know, pass-blocking guy or a really good short yardage guy, really good goal line guy. So, you know, there's a specific use that you could have for Melvin Gordon. And honestly, I'm thinking more about the goal line than anything. You know, I just feel like what we saw in the preseason, what we saw even last season, it's apparent that we need a goal line back on this football team. Even Jonathan Taylor didn't have good luck at the goal line last season. And even in 2021, when Jonathan Taylor had, you know, 18 rushing touchdowns, but a lot of that was, you know, his home run ability. You know, there's still some goal line work, and that's the offensive line's fault too. But needing a goal line back and having somebody that's big enough to be able to push some guys and fall into the end zone matters. And, and being able to execute that when you get to the red zone is a big deal, right? That's kind of one of the things that separates the good teams from the great teams is being able to actually punch it into the end zone when you get there. So I think Mo and Gordon could have some use in that department, right? But then another running back that I think could have some use in different areas is James Robinson. Okay, we saw this guy in the division for a couple of years, and he was really good, undrafted rookie free agent, and had a 1,000-yard season. I'm not entirely sure why this guy keeps going from team to team and keeps getting cut off of different teams. Now, my only guess here is basically the same thing as Melvin Gordon at this point is these guys don't play special teams, but they aren't going to be number ones on teams, right? These guys are going to teams that have multiple backs, but they're not good enough to stay as the backs that are already there, right? So if these guys aren't playing special teams, it's hard to see them making the team. But at the same time, the Colts have Deion Jackson, who can play special teams and has played special teams in the past and then you have Evan Hull who's a rookie like if you need him to play special teams you can have him play special teams but I think that somehow some way I, I just feel like James Robinson can be a guy on this team like even if you have Zach Moss come back like I just keep thinking like what if Jonathan Taylor isn't playing for us this year like having James Robinson as part of the four-man rotation there throughout the season would be really good Right. So I think it'd be a good addition for the offense. But again, somebody has to play special teams. Would that you know, be whole or would they want that to be James Robinson? So I don't know if either of these are going to happen, but if one is more likely than the other, I'd say it's probably James Robinson. OK, now some receivers that I think the Colts should go after because we only have four on the roster right now. And we kind of mentioned, you know, Juwan Winfrey, there's always a chance he could be back. Uh, Amari Rogers, there's a chance he could be back. But the guys that I think we should go after, first one's going to be Kiki Cutie. Okay, and we've seen him here before. We know what his utility is. If you need him to slot in at wide receiver, he could do it. You kind of hope he doesn't have to, but he could do it. But this is more of a special teams play. You know, and Kiki Cutie, good on special teams. So I feel like it's a good depth piece to have. And he has a special teams utility. So it would make sense to go out to Kiki QT, right? He knows some of the guys that are here. So there's that familiarity aspect that comes with it. So that, that'd be a good guy to pick up. But also there's Devin Allen, the wide receiver that the Eagles dropped. This is another guy that's mostly special teams for me, but he is also a world-class sprinter. Okay, like this guy super fast and we saw what he could do on special teams in the preseason right he was able to break a tackle 
from Tommy Ade and ended up near taking the kickback for touchdown. Okay, so I think he could be a weapon on special teams and adding somebody like that for special teams, it would leave you with Josh Downs and Isaiah McKenzie just for the offense. It would leave you with Dallas Flowers just having to concentrate on defense, right? You can get a guy that can come in and be your fifth wide receiver, but he just plays special teams, and that's fine because that saves your other guys that are actually playing offense and defense. So I like the idea of bringing Devin Allen. Um, if he does come in, right, you think about where he's coming from, the Eagles. He was on the Eagles last year also, so he has familiarity with the offense, and he can help anybody that might need some help understanding the offense. From that aspect, I think there's some value. So I could see a world where Devin Allen comes in and is the Colts' fifth receiver. So that's something, if it happens, you know, just make sure you tell people you heard it here first. Okay, but the last thing I have here for the offense is going to be Michael Dunn, a guard for the Browns. And a lot of people, a lot of Browns fans really surprised by this cutting. You know, that, that Browns O-line has been really good for so long, and they do such a good job. And the scheme is good for the offensive linemen there in Cleveland. So Michael Dunn ended up becoming expendable for them. But this is a guy that a lot of football teams that have issues on the offensive line, they're going to be going after him. So it'll be interesting to see if this is the guy that the Colts put in their first waiver claim for. Okay, going into waivers, Colts have the fourth waiver claim in priority. So whoever they decide to pick first, this is a guy that they really wanted to go after. And I think Michael Dunn honestly could be that. You know, we've talked about Melvin Gordon and James Robinson. We've talked about Devin Alley and Kiki QT, but Michael Dunn is the one, the person on this list that honestly could be the first waiver claim. I wouldn't be surprised at all, especially because he has some versatility. He's had to play center due to injuries. You know, it was only in the preseason in 2022, but he has had to do it. And the fact that he can be versatile and he's willing to be versatile, like that means he's willing to play special teams too, right? The more you can do, the more value you bring. And he's somebody that could probably start, right? I feel like I would be more comfortable with him in the starting lineup than Will Fries in the starting lineup. So it, we'll keep an eye on that. And, and if anything happens there, I'll definitely let you guys know. But that's something that if it happens, I think we should be excited about how much better the offensive line is going to be. Okay, but then you look at the defense. Got a couple guys on the defense here. If you watched the video yesterday, we talked about Bradley Roby. Okay. And I think Bradley Roby would be a good addition to the cornerback room. You know, Darius Rush was waived, and there's no telling if we're going to get him back. So I think bringing in Bradley Roby to be a depth piece in this cornerback room and with his veteran leadership would be a great idea, right? Dow's Flowers, second year. DJ Baker, second year. Jalen Jones, rookie. Juju Brents, rookie, right? And Tony Brown is still on the team, but he's – a special team. His only purpose on this team is for special teams, right? So you can have Jalen Jones be a special teamer in his rookie season, have him be like a red shirt rookie season and have him playing special teams because he was really good as a gunner in the preseason. So uh, I think having that happen where you have Jalen Jones play special teams, Bradley Roby's a depth piece. Would he start right away would be the question. I'm not sure. I feel like there's uh, a good chance he would be like the first man up behind Kenny Moore for that slot, right? And being able to take Kenny Moore off the field every now and then so that Kenny's not playing every single play and we have him being at his best in the fourth quarter. So there are multiple reasons here. I think Bradley Roby would be good. So hopefully this is somebody that we get. I expect there to be a pretty good market for Bradley Roby throughout the NFL, and he's a veteran player. He might be wanting to go somewhere where he sees a real opportunity to be able to win a championship. So I'm going to keep my eye closely on Bradley Roby and what's happening with that, um, but I do hope that the Colts are able to land him for that defense. Right, But then you have Dean Marlowe. The safety from the Bills was a name that I did not expect to see land on the waiver wire, but if we're able to pick him up, I like it. You know, he's not amazing, but if you add him to the safety room instead of Trevor Denbo, I feel a lot better about our safety depth going into the season. Now, there is a chance. I, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. I don't know what 
Dean Marlowe's special teams utility is at this point. But the way he is physically, like I feel like he would probably be a guy that could find a way to be good on special teams. So if he can come in, do that if he needs to. But then if he has to fill a spot, which is possible with the injuries, you know, Roddy Thomas has had a couple injuries in his career, missed a couple of games. Julian Blackman could miss time at any point. So I like the thought of having Dean Marlowe on the roster and bringing him into that defense. He's somebody, you know, I pay attention to the Bills a lot, especially last season when the Colts were bad. Um, you know, I was indoctrinated into Bills Mafia. And I saw I was pulling for the Bills. I, I, I saw I could be a little partial to Dean Marlowe, could be a little biased here. Uh, but I, I really like him as a football player. I think he has the physical attributes that Chris Bauer looks at in certain positions. You know, you look at the safety position, he has everything Chris Bauer looks for. So I think he'd be a good addition to the safety room. Trevor Denbo gets out. If you've been watching, you know that's exactly what I want. So um, that's something that I hope that happens. Um, you know, and going back through this real quick, we have Melvin Gordon, Dean Marlowe, Michael Dunn, Devin Allen, Kiki QT, Bradley Roby, and James Robinson. And of the ones that I think could be likely or things that I'd really like to happen, we're looking at Dean Marlowe, Michael Dunn, Devin Allen, and Bradley Roby. Those are all ones that either very likely or that I really, really want to happen. Okay. So with that said, that's going to wrap up this video. Make sure you subscribe with notifications on so you keep getting notified when more Colts news is happening. And until next time, as always, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and go Colts.